Hello everyone, my name is Islam, I'm one of the developers of the Bitcoin integration. In a previous tutorial, I covered how you can deploy your very first Bitcoin dApp on the internet computer. It was a very simple dApp that can send and receive Bitcoin on the Bitcoin testnet. In this tutorial, I want to cover how you can deploy this very same dApp locally. So this makes it very useful for you to quickly iterate on the development of your dApp, as well as to write regression tests. So the first step in order to develop and debug Bitcoin dApps locally is to set up our own local Bitcoin network. This is particularly useful because now we can mine blocks and confirm transactions whenever we want to. Uh, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we had to wait for several minutes for a transaction to be confirmed. But when we deploy our own local Bitcoin chain, we have the flexibility to mine blocks whenever we want and however many blocks that we want. So this becomes really useful for testing out different scenarios and different edge cases. So here I am on the bitcoin.org website. I'm going to download Bitcoin Core. You can choose the version corresponding to whatever platform that you're using. If you are using a Mac, I recommend using the Tar GZ version. So that's what I have done. On the left, I had already downloaded this Tar. I decompressed it into this folder. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file called bitcoin.conf. This is a configuration file that Bitcoin is going to use when it's starting up. And I am going to paste the following. This is something that you can copy and paste from the written version of this tutorial. You don't really need to know too much about what it contains. Um, but at a high level, the first line here is uh, rec test equals one. Here we are enabling something called rec test mode or regression testing mode. This is the mode that allows us to run Bitcoin locally. And below we have some dummy credentials in order for the Bitcoin command line interface to work. So you can copy that as is from the written uh, tutorial. So I'm going to save that. And I am going to create an empty folder called data, or you can call it whatever you like. Uh, but this is going to be the place where uh, all of the state of my local chain will be stored. And then I can run a command that looks like this. So here we are running the Bitcoin D binary. We are specifying the configuration file that we want to use. This is the one that we just created. Uh, we are specifying the data directory where we want the data to be stored. And that is in this data folder that we just created. And we want to be uh, connecting to or listening on port 18444. You can choose whatever port that uh, suits your needs. I think the default port is 18444. So let's go ahead and run this. And so now we have a Bitcoin daemon running. And you can see in the logs, it is binding to port 18444. So now we have a local Bitcoin chain running. Let's go ahead and deploy uh, the local app that connects to this chain. So if you haven't done this already, you can go to the Definity examples repository on GitHub. This is a repository that contains a number of examples, including the Bitcoin app that we are working with. And here in the top left, I had already cloned this repository and I navigated into the Rust slash basic Bitcoin folder. There's also a Motoko version uh, and the instructions that I'm going to mention here applies to both Rust and Motoko. The first thing that I want to show you is the configuration of dfx.json. So we need a way to configure our dfx project to connect to the local Bitcoin node that we just created. So specifically these lines. So here we are specifying that we want the Bitcoin integration to be enabled. And then we are specifying that we want to connect to this local Bitcoin node at port 18444. This is the same port that we used when we were initializing uh, our Bitcoin daemon. And so now we can start DFX. Uh, yep. And you'll notice if I were to scroll up, the first line here is a line that's saying that the Bitcoin adapter is starting. So this is a very good indication that now DFX is connecting to this local Bitcoin node. Now let's go ahead and deploy this example. You'll notice it's 
the same command that we used to deploy to production. The difference is that now we're specifying rec test uh, as the network that we want to connect to, which if you recall, is the configuration that we specified in bitcoin.conf. So we enabled uh, the our local Bitcoin node was initialized with the rec test mode enabled, and that is the mode that we want to connect to. So this is going to be deploying uh, a local uh, canister on uh, on our own uh, replica. And if you run into issues with the compilation, in this case, I had already compiled the canister. But if you do run into issues specifically for Mac users, we do include some tips in the written version of this tutorial. You may need to install some additional packages in order for the compilation uh, to work. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the candid, oops, the candid UI for this canister. And it's as you would expect from what you had seen in the previous tutorial, uh, you can interact with some of these endpoints. For example, I can now generate uh, Bitcoin addresses locally. This is using the threshold ECDSA API to generate an ECDSA public key. And from that, we are creating a pay to public key hash address. Uh, I can look up the balance of this address. And this is using the same Bitcoin API that is available in production. And as you would expect, our balance is zero because this is a local Bitcoin node and we didn't mine any blocks. There is no Bitcoin to have around. So receiving uh, Bitcoin uh, is a little bit different locally. So on mainnet, when we were connecting to the Bitcoin testnet, we were able to use a testnet faucet. Locally, however, we'll need to mine blocks. When you mine blocks in Bitcoin, the miner gets a reward. And locally, we can mine as many blocks as we want, as fast as we want. And this can really help us in testing out various edge cases for our DAP. And furthermore, we can specify a Bitcoin address that would receive these rewards. So this is the command that we would use. <clears throat> this would be the Bitcoin CLI, and we would be uh, using the generate to address command. And here we would supply two arguments. There is the first argument, which is the number of blocks that we want to mine. In this case, let's go ahead with mining one block and then the address that we want to receive the rewards. So here I just pasted the Bitcoin address of our canister. And you'll notice, okay, so now we have mined one block. This is the block hash. And if you noticed at the top in the DFX logs, you'll see that we have picked up on the fact that there is a new block. And now the height of our local chain is one. So if I were to call my balance again, we have now received uh, 50 Bitcoins in rewards. When you mine a block, especially in the early blocks, it can vary. Uh, but in the first uh, the first blocks, you can get 50 Bitcoins in reward. So here we have our balance in Satoshi, that is 50 Bitcoins. And in order to spend, this is a bit of a quirk with the local setup, in order to spend these rewards, there is a rule in Bitcoin that these rewards need to have 100 confirmations, meaning that we need to mine 100 additional blocks in order for us to be able to spend this Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, oops. So here I have a command, the same generate to address command, and I'm specifying that I want to mine 100 blocks. And for the address, I'm gonna use a random address. It doesn't really matter where these rewards go. Uh, all I care about in this case is that I would get 100 additional confirmations so that I can spend the 50 Bitcoin that I have. So let me go ahead and run this. These are all the block hashes that we just generated. And you can see in the top logs here, we have synced and ingested all of these 100 new blocks. And now we are at, at a height of 101. And so now we are able to spend the 50 Bitcoin that this canister has. So let's go ahead and try to do that. I'm going to, maybe I can expand this a little bit. I'm going, oops. Uh, I am going to specify an address. Uh, what would be 
any address. So let me go ahead and give it to this canister. Or sorry, to, to this address. And I'm going to specify, let's say, 20 bitcoins. I think one, two, three, four. Is that correct? Yep, that's uh, that's 20 bitcoins. And so now we can spend this Bitcoin just like we would be able to spend uh, in production. And you can see some of the logs here in the top left. So we are fetching the UTXOs of our address. We are building a transaction where we've estimated a fee. We now have the transaction. This is the raw unsigned transaction. We have signed this transaction and these are the bytes of this signed transaction that is being sent to the network. And then finally, we send this transaction. This is exactly the same way that it works in production. But if you recall, in the previous tutorial, we have to wait for a confirmation to happen in the Bitcoin testnet network in order for us to see the effect of this transaction. Here, uh, locally, we have a bit more freedom. So the first thing that we can do is we can look up our local mempool. So here we can see that this transaction is now in our mempool, so it is ready to be mined. And so now we can mine just one more block and give the rewards also to a random Bitcoin address. And so now the we've mined a new block, the height has been updated. Now let's go ahead and check our balance again. And now you can see that we had spent the 20 Bitcoin. It went to the address that we had specified uh, in the destination below. And so that covers sending and receiving Bitcoin locally. You'd find this very useful in order to write regression tests for your Bitcoin DAP and to quickly test out different edge cases. The written version uh, of this tutorial, as well as additional documentation, is available in the description. Please also check out the forums if you have any questions. Let us know your feedback. Thank you.